Welcome back to Podcast for the Recently Released. I'm your host, Louis Stardust. And I'm your co-host, Joe Matisse. Um, Before we get into today's episode, I wanted to say that this week I had, or I guess it was technically last week because it was Friday? Saturday? It was Friday. I had the pleasure of doing a really cool like interview style uh, show with my friend Mia, Anna Mia, for Previous World. They have a series called The Panel. And I got to talk about Deadly Class on there, which is really cool. I'm super into Deadly Class, obviously. Um, We've talked about that in the past before. I've done it on my Image Weekly series. And if you'd like to hear us talk about, like, the comic, the first volume itself, a little bit about the show and just something different, uh, be sure to check out Previous World. They have it on their YouTube. They live stream it on their Facebook, too, so you can find it there, Twitch, all that stuff. Awesome. Definitely check that out. Now, today is our 69th episode. Nice. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. Wait. What? What number was it? 69. Nice. Nice. All right. So in today's episode, we're going to be touching base on the movie Nobody, the Invincible finale, and a couple comic books, Red Rooster and Bass Reeves. So, let's get into this. We'll start with uh, the movie Nobody. You could start with that because it gets how much of that I watched. I watched up into the home invasion, which is like the first 15 minutes in the movie, not even. Well, which one? The first one or the second one? The first one where he goes with the golf clubs and the police officer is basically like, you're a bitch for not saving your family. That's ridiculous. That's how he talked to him. No, I mean that you only got that far. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm a little... You know what it is? The dogs just, they get so cuddly. <laughs> All right. Well. And I fall asleep. I faster. I had a lot of fun watching this movie. Um, It's Bob Odenkirk. He plays a guy named Mitch Manzel. Mm-hmm. And then um, his father is Christopher Lloyd from, uh, what is that, Back to the Future? And then um, his brother is Riza. Right? So here's basically like the summary of Rizza, this. Riza, like from Wu-Tang? Yeah, yeah, Rizzo from Wu Tang. Why? And who's the other one? Christopher Lloyd is his father. And his brother is Rizzo? Yes. That is correct. <laughs> Are you fucking with me? I'm dead serious. If you would have watched this movie, you would have understood this whole thing, but you missed it. All right. Well, anyway, so let me give you a basic summary of this movie, well, right? The main thing is that. It's in the same world as John Wick, right? I believe so. Or it's the same creators or similar people or yeah. something like that. It's pretty interesting. And it, and it feels like a almost like a more satirical version of John Wick when you watch it. It's pretty funny. So basically, this Mitch Manzel, right? He fails to defend himself and his family when two thieves break into his uh, suburban home one night. The aftermath of the incident soon strikes a match to a long, simmering rage. In a barrage of fists, uh, gunfire, and squealing tires, Mitch awakes, awakens a dark part of his past as an auditor for the military and must now save his wife and son from a dangerous adversary in the Russian mafia named Yulian and ensure that he will never be underestimated again. So, it's a pretty, like, just... It's the story's whatever. It's pretty typical and like it's pretty comedic in a sense like that the thing that really sets him off when this robbery happens aside from his own failures is like his daughter can't find her kitty cat bracelet and he thinks they might have stole it and he like snaps. But like everything that happens is really like just silly and it's like gory and crazy. Um he definitely whoops some ass in it and at the same time gets his ass kicked. And you can tell, like, he's an old man. He needs to take breaks and, like, breathe for a second and then go back into it. It's pretty funny. I mean, what did you think of the little tiny bit you saw of this movie? I'm, you know, all I saw was the opening thing. And that was pretty cool. Um, The whole concept of him, like, not fighting these home invaders because, like, well, I'm guessing it's because he's, his identity's a secret to them, no? Yeah, his parents, or not his parents, his wife and kids don't really know about his past. Yeah, and it looks degree. like, I would assume their marriage is on the rocks based on, like, the fact that she sleeps with the pillow between them or something. 
Yeah, that's a little weird. They have like a pillow wall going on. That or they just want their own space. Corny, yeah. But that's or what they need their own space. Yeah, that's the only thing I gathered from the few minutes that I was awake. Um, would have loved to see him kick some ass. The police officer was a douchebag, but yeah. Well, I I think this this is a lot of fun. This whole movie's really fun to just watch and have a good laugh. And there's some really cool action scenes. Uh, a lot of the the driving stuff is fun. Uh, there's a lot of shooting stuff. You know, the majority of the the end of the movie is a lot of like gunfight type stuff, and and a little bit of driving as well. But it's really fun. And at first, it's mostly just him fighting this whole situation because when he gets into this fit of rage and goes after these robbers, he ends up going onto a bus and then fighting a bunch of young kids who are in there harassing people. And um, one of them, he like near kills the guy and it's the brother of this Russian mafia guy. So they start retaliating on him and basically that kicks him into high gear. He has to hide his family and then kind of fight this whole situation. And he decides to ride it out all the way through. And it's pretty crazy and it's just basically like the whole one man taking on this big organization and all this stuff. And it's, it's a lot of fun watching all the big fight scenes where it's him and multiple people. You know what I mean? Like uh, when towards the end when it's just like more of each fight where it's just him and maybe one or two other people, you know, it's the typical like struggling and then like he either just makes it or something happens and he gets in a worse situation. But when he's fighting everybody in one big shot, it's pretty gnarly. Definitely. And they like really destroy the shit out of the house. You know, like they they wreck everything. And then the place where he works he like buys the place basically and there's a big scene at the end that that goes on in that building and that's really crazy and they destroy that place too so there's a lot of destruction and a lot of fighting and a lot of people die you should have watched it all the way through i missed it um i don't know the the trailer itself like didn't seem like it was for me i like some action movies but i'd rather watch like a i don't know like a true crime or horror or something else that I'd rather watch in general, but it looked interesting. So, well, either way, I watched it. I thought it was awesome. If you want to check it out, definitely do. I would give it like an eight out of ten. It's really fun. It's funny on top of it, and the action scenes aren't like super cheesy. They're legit for sure. All right, so let's move on to something you did watch, or I'm hoping you watched all the way through, which is the finale of Invincible. Yes, I watched it. You watched it. Okay, mm-hmm. good, good. So we can talk a bit about that. Um, do you want me to give kind of an overview of what happens sure. first? Okay, so basically it starts off right after Omni-Man kills the immortal and Mark freaks out. Omni-Man tells him the truth about the Veltramites killing and enslaving planets, kind of being masked as heroes. Mark kind of refuses this and they brawl and Omni-Man beats him to a near coma while like killing people with his body and stuff. Just pretty much being like these people are worthless, right? Mark pleads with him until he stops beating him and basically flies off. Um, the Maulers get arrested. There's shots of everyone kind of mourning and damage on the news and everything from the fight. Mark wakes up from his coma and gets recruited by Cecil to kind of fight these problems. Um, you see the Guardians kind of have a moment and finally bond a bit. Uh, they they get to train together and stuff like that, which is cool. Um, then they go to show them re- re- resurrecting the Immortal again, which is just kind of funny. That Like, is this guy just going to keep getting resurrected? Well, either way, right? It goes to Mark and his mom finally coming home and mourning a bit kind of separately. Um, Amber shows up and kind of tries to make up things with him. And even William then show up kind of right after They all realize they know about his identity and they go out to eat. You know, Debbie kind of goes off to mourn and drink with Art, uh, the suit maker guy. And uh, Mark gets a call from Cecil and just dips off into space. And we see Alan the alien again, you know, and he basically is like, oh, my God, there's a Veltramite on Earth. And he's like, yeah, dude, let me tell you about this whole thing. And then Alan tells him, like, they invaded his planet and they barely survived and warns that they'll definitely be coming to Earth. And they showed like a, a clip of like the Sequoid invasion traveling to Earth. Um, they also showed al- the alien invaders from before and a bunch of other villains and stuff to kind of end the finale. Um, it was it was really cool. A lot of epic stuff going on. W- what did you think watching this? Um, this episode was graphic. 
Like, really just, there's a scene where Mark goes to save, like, a woman and her child from this building, and he's, like, holding on to them for dear life, and the whole thing just comes crumbling down, and it's, like, uh, the things that his dad says to him are, like, so fucked up and hurtful, obviously, and it's just, like, could you imagine living your entire life, like, with your fucking parents and like most of the time it's usually that they think the kid's just a crushing disappointment and it's a shitty comment no it's your dad saying all this stuff and literally being the shit out of you and lying to you about his relationship with your mother when you think they're fucking in love and happy you know what i mean um i don't know i mean it was done well but like i can't imagine if this was a real scenario being his wife yeah like being lied to your entire life and now you have this child who's a product of him and you don't know which way he's gonna go essentially is like fucking crazy um i i like cecil i don't know if we're supposed <laughs> to like him but yeah, a lot I of the, like him. yeah a lot of the dialogue he did on this episode i really liked um i don't care for mark and amber like reconciling their relationship yeah. uh as much as I appreciate her, like, being supportive, like, as a friend to him because she hasn't been the greatest support system. Um, sometimes, understandably so, sometimes not. Uh, other than that, I mean, it was it was really graphic. It was really brutal. It was good, though. I liked it all the way through. It was a very good ending to the season, I think. Yeah, definitely action-packed. And they still managed some, like, slower stuff and some dialogue and everything. But otherwise... The action was crazy, and I think it's a really good setup for where the next season could go. There's well, a bunch of stuff to cover. It's already renewed for season two and three, which is nice. Um, so we know we're definitely getting that. And I mentioned I didn't mention this. You did. But I love that Seth Rogen's little alien guy came back. Yeah. What a fun character. Yeah, Alan the alien. So yeah. that'll be pretty cool to see. And, you know, he's probably going to have another big fight, like with Omni-Man or something like that. There's going to be a lot of fights going on. Well, we don't, don't know where he went. Yeah, and I don't know how long until, like, the Veltramites are going to start coming to Earth, but hopefully we'll see some of that soon, too. That would be pretty crazy. I'm really interested to see how that goes. But what would you give this season overall, like, rating-wise? a solid nine. I don't think there was really anything I hated about it. Um, I probably would have liked more episodes, but honestly, like, I keep seeing people, like, even tweeting about this. It's like, you want me to watch... 12 episodes of a show and then wait a fucking year not sometimes not even 12 wait a year to come back and like be as excited about it as i can and then you if you're not doing it weekly which the show did weekly which is nice you binge it at once and then you get stuck for a fucking year waiting for that I hate yeah that. i mean that's watching tv though no you know, watching tv is like a was. good like 20 fucking plus episodes yeah, I understand Not the that. But CW drops half of Superman and Lois and then comes back three months later. Like, no, I hate that. Just give yeah. me the full fucking show. I get that the less episodes thing is definitely lame, but I definitely enjoyed the season. I'd give the season a solid nine as well. I really liked it. Definitely check it out on Amazon Prime if you haven't. But if you've been watching these episodes, chances are you've been watching it as well. And, like, it, the, the show's been really cool. Very good. Yeah, very consistent for sure. And, um, okay, so now we can go over to, let's see, the comic books. Ugh, I don't care about is, any of those. Okay, why don't you care about this? Because you don't like good comics. I like good comics. What do you mean? I didn't know if they were going to be good or bad. So, basically, at Walmart, right? There's actually a section near the electronics where they have a mini comic stand. And it's by this company, Allegiance Arts. And they had four separate comics there. And um, I decided to buy them. And I waited until they had at least three issues of each story to pick up. And then I'd read them and do like just a little run through, right? So I decided to do a read through of the first two. And it's Red Rooster and Bass Reeves, right? And these are actually pretty cool. They're not like anything super like out of control, supernatural. I mean, like one of them's based on a real person and the other one's just kind of like an old timey, you know, like almost patriotic hero -y kind of thing. And uh, OK, so we'll start with Red Rooster, right? I'll give you a basic rundown of this and you you can shun it or tell me what you think just here in this summary, right? I just laughing at your tattoos because sometimes i forget you have certain ones and then i just saw it and it was making me laugh i wasn't laughing at the comic oh well either way <laughs> i okay so this is the summary they give you kind of in the book here 
For centuries, the vulnerable mantle of the Red Rooster passed from generation to generation, battling the most ancient and pernicious evils. Frank Cooper found himself dining the, uh, donning the cape and cowl at the dawn of mass media, motion pictures, and radio. It catapulted, you know, the once secretive order of the dawn into the spotlight of celebrity, potentially for catastrophic, you know, effects to happen afterwards. So basically, like, this is in the 1930s, and this guy gets passed down the mantle of this Red Rooster hero thing, and he joins the Dawn, or the Order of the Dawn, which is like a group of heroes. And basically, he becomes a celebrity, and he starts getting radio deals and, you know, commercial deals and stuff like that, and they're showing that it's having a bad effect because now villains are starting to congregate and team up against his personal character and they're able to target him his friends his family things like that a little bit easier and it kind of shows you this happening in these first three issues and they introduce a lot of these characters and it's really cool because the time period seeing them fly these old planes and drive these old cars and it's him and his dog and you know he has a partner that's like you know got a little bit of a drinking problem and the, the one lady she she flies the plane and, and they all get into these situations where like she gets into an awesome plane kind of gunfight with the with another guy in a plane and a fight on foot, you know, at the, at this hangar. And he gets in him and his partner go to a fair and they end up getting ambushed. And there's a bunch of stuff that happens in this. And it's just a lot of fun. And I really enjoyed the comic. And, you know, I can go into it in depth uh, like a bunch, but I figure I'll wait a little bit till we get further along. But these first three issues were really good. I would give this like a, probably a solid 8 out of 10 so far. And I would really like to read what else they're going to put out. This was really cool. Definitely check this out if you're into just reading some new comics and want to support a, a smaller company like Allegiance Arts. I, I didn't know about this company. I don't know how long this has been happening, but they got three issues for each story. So I'm assuming it's fairly new. What do you think hearing that summary generally? Would you be interested in reading no. a comic? Whatever. Okay, well, it's not her kind of thing. But Me I either. very I'm much enjoyed it. Me. Well, I thought it was really fun. And his character's name is Red Rooster. And he's got a dog named You're Rascal. You're willing to read those, but not the comics I've recommended to you for the past four years that are absolutely incredible, that have great storylines. And you instead read these. Yes, ma'am. Well, either way, <laughs> don't mess up the don't mess up our uh, little hub here. <laughs> don't flip over the fucking table. <laughs> Definitely check this one out. Okay, now let me tell you about the other one. There's one more, and it's Bass Reeves. It's I got worse. two more to do next week. What do you mean worse? This one's awesome. So let me read you no. the summary for this one, and then you tell me what you think. So I hate it. Reeves spent nearly 20 years in his role as the first black U.S. Marshal to serve west of the Mississippi by the time he retired in 1909. After some 32 years in law enforcement, you know, he laid claim to apprehending more than 3,000 fugitives, facing down some of the most dangerous criminals America's ever known. He was an exemplary lawman, you know, held for his marksmanship, his de detective skills, and for unwavering moral code. That in one particularly dark, you know, and telling chapter, even saw him have to like arrest his own son for murder. So this actually starts in around like 1875, and it's a story about a real guy. Like you can look up the history of this guy apparently, and this is a great story, and it's really fun. It's like classic, classic kind of western, and um, it's just really cool seeing like a, a a comic in this style and the guy really has kind of even in these first three issues gives you a good idea of like this really awesome like towering scary kind of lawman that almost is like a myth to criminals out in this like kind of lawless land and this guy is actually a real dude who's struggling like you know with his family his faith like his pride and all these different things and it's really really good so far i think like if you're into like westerns especially you should really check this one out this one's a lot of fun and i i think i would almost rate this one higher even than red rooster i would give this like an 8.5 this one i really enjoyed and bass reeves seems like a really badass guy i'm gonna check out some like 
biography stuff I saw. Like there's some documentaries when I was searching this comic. But um, it seems really cool. I don't know if you're really into westerns, but what did you think of that summary when you heard it? I like westerns. The concept is cool that it's based off of a person, I guess. But the story is not anything I would ever read. So, Well, I thought that that was a really cool comic overall Ooh. the art is awesome maybe on read both of them. some of the stuff i've been trying well, to get you i to will read for four years i will i will do that sure and we we will talk about them but sure. you just did one you did you know where you talked about what deadly class and everything you talked about that right if you would like we could obviously read some some stuff as well sure. you you tell what what do you want to read and talk about together i don't know anyways um Shadow and Bone came out on Netflix. That's real popular right now. We haven't watched. I watched the first episode, so maybe we'll get you to watch that. Also, Pokemon Snap came out, so nothing else matters to me, and everything else in the world is irrelevant <laughs> because Pokemon Snap came out. I've been playing this game since it came out as a young child. Okay, I've been playing a Pokemon young, Snap. A young and child. Every year, I replay it on my N64 at least once, sometimes twice, just to compare pictures or I think the game is cute. And I've been saying since the switch came out that that would be the perfect system to do pokemon snap and guess what it's finally here i've been playing a little bit today not that much of it it's super cute feels very nostalgic and i'm very excited for it and i have one complaint okay. it's still on a track i want to be able to roam around and take my pictures and hide in the bushes and like jump out yeah, but I guess that kind of like the whole thing is supposed to feel like it's like a safari ride where you're on like a very specific like ride course and every time you do like the first time is like the first trail right and it's like you're learning everything but you go back to that trail and now they have no like new skills you could do different things and like then you go at night and it's different so i think if you were to free roam it would just make it chaotic as all hell then we need nintendo vr to make it even more exciting that would be cool like a vr thing for that where you can free roam would be really cool yeah i think that would make it really exciting then but we'll definitely have a review up for that soon because you'll be playing it quite a lot over the next few days i have a feeling hey i like your hoodie my hoodie yeah eagle fang karate dojo. pretty awesome right and then the side here if we look at the side can we see it oh it's bite, bite like, like an eagle, eagle. Yeah. So, you know, I talk the talk right now and squawk the squawk for those who don't know. It's from the official Netflix store in case anybody is also obsessed with Cobra Kai. Oh, you know what? That's coming back somewhat soon, I think, because they're almost they're, they've been filming. Right. But uh, Castlevania comes back. Yeah. Like an awesome week. trailer for Castlevania too. check that out. Yeah. That looked great. And there was also um some other shows I can't write. This month seems like a lot of shows are coming back, which is nice because it's been kind of a dry spell like a, on the winter of just missing all the shows I wanted to watch. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff for us to start watching. So we're going to have a lot. Even by next week, we'll have a few more things that uh, to check out. So we got to binge a little bit over yeah. this next week. So this will be fun. Definitely uh, keep, an, keep an ear out. Oh, whoa. Did you guys hear that? Do you hear that when she does that? Do that sound again? That's very creepy sounding. It's like ASMR. I'm going to put on some chapstick. I don't like it. Very weird. Ooh. Also, there was that trailer of that show from the makers of Dark. Yes. Did you watch it? No. Okay, I, so I didn't watch it. <laughs> Well, I didn't watch it, but I want to check it out. What was it called? It was called Bo Odar. Mm -hmm. Bo Dar. Um, I didn't watch it either. I just sent it to you so we could watch it together. But um, we were big fans of Dark. Probably, oh, in my opinion, fans. the best huge like fans. show that Netflix has done. Um, and so with that being said, I'm going to trust that this will probably be good as well if it's from the creators of that. So Yeah. And by the end of this month, we'll be able to watch The Unholy as well. That'll be available towards the end of the month. So we'll check that out. I saw that it's not getting some good ratings right now, yeah. but I still want to see it. You know, I like Jeffrey Dean Morgan, so we'll definitely check that out. I keep pushing for some Shutter stuff because there's a bunch of new stuff on there that's quite good. We could probably get through. All right, let's do that then. But that about wraps up episode 69. 
Yeah, if Woo. you guys have any shows you think we should check out, please let us know, considering, like, we're done with all of our shows right now. Like, Loki doesn't come out until, like, June or July, right? Yeah. Um, it's like a two-month delay right now. Yeah, there's no shows. So if there's a show recommendation you would like us to check out and watch that's new, um, please let us know. Maybe we'll check out that Shadow and Bone since it seems to be getting a lot of good reviews. Bone Shadow. If you like this episode and want to listen to previous episodes of Podcast for the Recently Released, you can go over to podcastfortherecentlyreleased.com. On there, you can find direct links to um, everywhere you can listen to us. So one is directly through our website. We also have a Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple, I almost said Apple Pay, <laughs> Apple Podcast, uh, pretty much anywhere podcasts can be listened to. And there's also direct links to our own pages. So if you want to find us on Instagram, uh, me or Joe, like all of our social media is there. But we also have a podcast Instagram, which is pod for the recently released. I sometimes post memes on there. We ask you guys questions. Uh, sometimes we put show highlights and clips. Um, but it's the best way to get like a reminder of when new episodes go live. Uh, so if you're not, you know, already getting that notification from the yes. place you're listening to. Yes. And again, you get to watch the video version of this on YouTube Wednesdays at 10 a.m. And that's um, Eastern time. Yes. You know, for those who get confused about that kind of stuff. We are on the East Coasts. Yes. There we so are. So definitely check us out. Everybody have a good night. Live the dream. Peace. Bye. 69. Thanks for listening to yet another episode of Podcast for the Recently Released. If you want to peep some of our older episodes, we've got a ton of them. Just check us out on podcastfortherecentlyreleased.com. We've got merch, older episodes, links for other ways to listen to us, and more. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Don't let your meatloaf stay safe out there, guys.